starting guy. Live, uh, it's very nice to see you all. We're here to do uh, this commentary on Our Majesty's Secret Service 50th anniversary event. Uh, for those of you who saw it, we released the concert finally after two years uh, on YouTube last night. And I know a lot of people tuned in to see the premiere. And since then, there's been hundreds and hundreds of people watching it. And I thought it'd be really great to get as many of the band back as I could fit onto our program here to uh, do a little live commentary. Um, I'm going to introduce you to everybody in a minute and explain some absentees. But uh, to get things up and running, let's... Um, Let's get this concert. Let's get this concert on the on the go. So, let me introduce you to who is here today. Um, first of all, the notable absence here. I have to mention uh, Kerry Schultz. Very sadly, couldn't be with us because she's a bit poorly. Um, but I'm very, very delighted to say that we've got a proper fan who stepped in at the last minute. Uh, being James Bond's Joe Darlington has stepped in uh, very kindly to uh, give us another angle on this commentary. So welcome, Joe, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I, like I mentioned to you earlier, honestly, I've been this this whole weekend reliving this trip, watching these videos. I, I've been enjoying it like. I, I can't believe it's two years already, but good lord, am I enjoying watching this stuff again? So thank you for bringing me in. Pleasure, pleasure. I'm going to whiz around the other people, and I'll bring you all in in a second. But just to tell you who's here, we've got Matt Walker, who you'll all know is the vocalist. We've got Steve Down, the guitarist for this particular event. Lee Aaron, the indisputable drummer from Cue the Music. You can't miss him. Uh, we've got Jez Davis on keyboards. And we've got a couple of technical people here as well who, without who, we wouldn't be uh, showing this at all today. Alan Jacobs, who headed up all the video for me, and Karen Andrews, who did the live sound and recording for me. Um, so, I'm going to start off by asking you all a question, and I'm going to answer it first to give you a chance to have a think about it. Going back two years, I want to get from each of you your overriding memory. The first thing that pops into your head when you think about this event, be it both from a playing point of view and then maybe something outside of the playing, something around the event, um, maybe, you know, might be something to do with the accommodation or the, the site or whatever. Um, so just have a little think about it. And I'm going to give you the two things that I always think about when I think of this event first. I think, first of all, playing, for me, it was just seeing the faces of everybody in front of me and so many people that I know and have come to, you know, really adore as really good friends and, and familiar people that are, you know, a big part of my life. And to see so many of them in front of me and know what it means to them and, um, you know, the anticipation of waiting for that event and seeing the absolute joy in their faces uh, is something that I'll never, ever forget. It was just incredible. Um, and then off the stage, one of the things that I always um, talk to people about when I try and describe what Piz Gloria and Schilthorn's Schilt like, if you've never been there, is it's almost otherworldly. And when you're at the top of the Alps and you're you're in that in that venue, you don't need to be a Bond fan to appreciate what an incredible location it is. And I often say to my wife, I really want to take you there one day. Uh, you know with the kids and, and show you because it's just something you've got to experience and when you stood right at the top 360 degree view of the Alps I mean I've never seen anything else like it in the world and it and it just really uh, highlighted to me the sort of the power of, of nature and how kind of insignificant we are as human beings when you you're up there looking down over this great incredible sight so let me pass it round then Matt what about Matt Walker? What about you? What, what are your memories on and off stage from that weekend? I think, um, well, one of the abiding memories is is just what it took to get there. I got in a day after everyone else, so I had something on the previous day. Um, took every form of transport imaginable to get there, kind of rushed up without appreciating, well, perhaps without taking it all in. Then we had the, you know, we had the setup. We had the gig to get through. Everyone was setting up at the time I got there. Um, the gig was incredible. And then the thing that really sticks with me is that waking up the next morning, taking a breath, looking, opening the curtains at the hotel, and looking out, and going, "Wow, 
this is an amazing place. So for me, it was that it was that way around. I don't know if I quite literally. I don't know if I caught my breath on the night itself, but yeah, it was uh, it was fantastic. I I remember actually when I did the recce, I had a similar thing. We arrived after um, dark and uh, we were absolutely shattered and when I woke up in the morning the same thing I opened the curtains to the Alps and it was like oh my god I didn't realize it was like this when we got here last night you know you could sort of see there was this sort of mountainous range in front of you you couldn't really make it out but yeah you, the scale of it is just incredible Steve down what about you oh wow um yeah I think um, I mean musically first um I think we were just saying before we came on here that like the this was like one of my very early gigs with the band so I, I think it was like for me it was just it was a really lovely experience like to be kind of around everyone in the band and just kind of being reminded like you know how nice everyone is in the band and just what what a fucking great band it is as well you know and how everything sounds incredible and you know that everyone came together to get the job done and you know, it was really cool uh, I, I really enjoyed it and i think the, the thing that i think the one thing that i'd got to take away from it is the, the altitude sickness kind of affecting how i was kind of feeling about playing and i remember kind of like right towards the very end um kind of almost almost kind of passing out <laughs> because of the, the altitude sickness um because i was suffering quite bad with it um uh, but yeah i mean that like you know you're just saying like the seeing the faces out in the audience and you know it's kind of like you know sheer euphoria i think for some people um, yeah but yeah off off stage um yeah like matt was just saying like it's just in like you know, incredible surroundings and um you know a bit of a, a history environment geek so just to kind of like just see the geology of the landscape and everything and um and the mountains and stuff it's just incredible it's very very humbling experience so um it's definitely up there like with you know some of the, the most incredible gigs that i've done like landscape wise <laughs> yeah yeah Lee, what about you? Oh man, um, very similar to Steve, really. I mean, um, I think with with all the kind of different gigs we've done, from theatres to private events, this one is just a, a spectacle of a gig. You know, it, it, it was just completely different to what we've. What, I don't think any of us have ever done anything like this, as far as the the height of the gig. Um, and I remember taking like aspirin to kind of thin my blood, you know, because uh, I was told, you know, being it being that high, um, that yeah. that would help, and it did help because I I didn't get funny at all, thankfully. And that's kind of important as a drummer not to yeah. <laughs> get you know tired or fatigued. But uh, yeah, again, the, it was just a gig that is not like any other gig that any of us have done and I think all of us can say that that none of us have ever done a gig with that type of at that magnitude you know with the yeah. view and the, the it was just unworldly I think the word is you know yeah yeah what about you Jez um well it's just an incredible experience really from um the as Steve pointed out earlier the incredible scenery and just the, the location and all the history you know with the, the bond history um and lovely people as well you know like you said warren you know these are all friends and it's just great to do to get to do something like this with your yeah. mates you know um i remember i think i'd i'd been really really busy and i had a lot of sounds and stuff to program for this gig for like the uh, majesty's medley and i just come from germany i think it was um Munich and Frankfurt or somewhere. I think I just got the train from Frankfurt and I was still programming the sounds on the train. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in a bit of a panic to try and finish it all, to be honest. You came, sort of... you came off off a tour with... Um, oh, um, my... I was with Mine's Susie. Susie Quattro, Susie Quattro yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you literally were on tour with her and you came from that tour straight across from germany didn't you jo joined yeah. us on this one and was then Basel or somewhere we met up yeah, the I think airport so, yeah there and i think um luckily that all worked out really well um, yeah yeah it was just it's amazing one of the things from the playing that i remember though particularly was just i'll never forget it the roar that went up after the majesty's medley mm -hmm. i've ne never really 
heard anything like that. You know, you can just hear that enthusiasm yeah. and the love for it in every single person there, and it's yeah, yeah that was such a special moment. Um, and and the, and the thing is as well, like you know, on without sort of sounding. I don't, want to, I don't want to sound over the top with this, but I think everybody in, in here that's, you know, play, we've all played in front of crowds of thousands, X number of thousands, and even higher. But there's something, even with only, what, 100, I think the maximum we're allowed was 200. I think there's probably 150 or so people in there. But sometimes 150 people can make more noise, and the enthusiasm in the noise can be more than, you know, 15,000. Yeah, that's right. And, you're right i completely agree with you that i've never experienced it was like so such a primeval kind of just so much emotion in it like it you know I people think, i think low, ce low ceilings in there as well like the sound yeah. is sort of all kept all pretty confined and you know it just sort of electrifies the atmosphere even more when yeah. you have that but um i remember i wasn't i didn't really suffer with the, any altitude sickness so i thought it was one of the few people that yeah. was pretty much fine um but yeah just amazing, amazing yeah thing to be part of. Te technically then we've got our our two representatives here and you know the the the, the, the whole gig takes on a very different dynamic for you guys because as, as much as you've uh, been particularly with Karen I always say that you know you're very much part of the performance ultimately you control how we sound but I think in a lot of ways yeah but I think in some way Karen you you maybe don't get the you don't get the limelight that we get because you stood on the other side of the crowd where they can't really see you but you get probably twice the pressure in some ways that we get because if you get a feedback or you know if someone pulls a plug out and everything goes, you you know oh, it's, it, it's, it's all on it's, you it's all the pressure i mean all you guys have got to do is play the right notes at the right time my playing days finished 30 years ago <laughs> but let, um, let, let's be honest though you were about playing solitaire really weren't you <laughs> I, I was, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, angry birds to be honest with you yeah um no i mean it's 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 a, it's a different thing because um ultimately what the what the audience hears comes through through my fingers and it doesn't matter you know how good the band are if i if i mess up then the the band gets the blame but uh, the downside of that of course is that if the audience thinks it's brilliant they all think it's the band and it's not yeah you know? <laughs> yeah yeah there's nothing to do with the band no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what about your memories have you got any memories that, that stand, jump out to you i mean obviously you were really you were the i think you were the most ill out of all of us on the day weren't you well i think that was a toss-up between me and matt i think it's amazing how well matt managed to to sing seeing the state that he was in during the afternoon but um, yeah it got me pretty bad and i spent once once we'd finished set up and sound check i just spent all the time just sat on the balcony outside feeling sorry for myself it was it was pretty terrible but but so in my main thing is i mean it's like most of you guys have, have already said it's the it's the view and the geology i've got a, yeah. i've got a little video on, on my phone that was taken during during the sound check where i've, I've panned slowly across the stage and then towards the window where i, I was stood right by a glass window and, yeah. and it pans out out the window, and all you see is the tops of snow-covered mountains with yeah. with the um, bits of the uh, wispy cloud floating between them. It was it was absolutely stunning, uh, bre totally breathtaking in every in every sense, you know. Yeah, th this video doesn't really um, reflect the, the the views that are behind us because, as you say, it on the sound check, yeah. It was, it was unbelievable. Dark by then anyway. yeah. yeah, it was unbelievable doing the sound check with the backdrop to the sides and behind everything else where it was just looking straight out over the Alps. I mean, yeah. I don't think any of us have played to that before. No. What? Well, just while we're on you, Karen, before I go to Alan and Joe, we've got a, a question in that 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 I think is one that, that you can answer and I'll maybe answer a little bit with you. But um, from the Gleaner who's asked, talking about low ceilings, was that something of a technical or acoustic problem, the low ceiling? <laughs> Um, so it was certainly a technical problem because we brought three sets of uh, <laughs> <laughs> of PA speakers to go on each side, and there was only 
there was physically only room to put up two. So yeah. <laughs> it, it was very much a technical reason. But uh, I mean, the, there was plenty because they're they're powerful enough. But we, we, the, it just meant that we ran the the system slightly harder than I would have liked to, rather than. Um, having a, a large system which is only running at half level so you get a, a, a much more clarity out of it um, but um, while it looks like a low ceiling it's actually a grid so there's space behind it so it, it didn't really affect the acoustics that much yeah there's the, the, the grid that's there there's actually a little foam lining um that, that yeah. sits on the other side of it and we brought across all these um, sort of fake fire spark machines to put to set off during <laughs> live and let die and a few other places and they shoot up sparks now these are these are supposedly um like heat free fire fi no, yeah yeah don't don't cause a fire but we got there and he thought do you know what it's not really worth the risk yeah. i don't want cue the music to be the ones that are responsible for burning piers gloria to the ground <laughs> <laughs> so we took them all the way over to switzerland and just 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 just, just chinned it off at the last minute but i mean talking about the speakers as well if you can see there on screen if on the far side above the guitarist's head they are literally about one inch from the ceiling i think we had to yeah. we had to slot them on at an angle and then lift it lift them into place if i remember because we couldn't well, actually get them on top yeah the um they've got a pole mount for, for for this sort of setup so they actually sit on top of um a, another big speaker with a pole in between yeah. and we weren't able to lift them up over onto the pole so we had to put the bracket on the pole and then lift yeah. the speaker onto the bracket and then lift the second speaker and, and just wedge it in on uh, between that and the ceiling so we had to yeah. you know, assemble it uh, uh, at the ceiling level it was there's a there's a couple of other challenging technical things i come to in a minute i mean the journey yeah. between Particular. but Alan um, I want to come to you because I mean literally you know we're seeing all this amazing footage and one of the things I'm so so glad that we did was that from the word go I wanted to get this film I wanted to take all the cameras that we could possibly muster I think we had 10 or 11 cameras if memory serves dotted around you know and you heading that up and obviously you're you're on the camera that's that we're seeing at the moment your your camera operator and what so what was it like for you with your memories looking back on it now well it's, it's all a bit surreal really uh, in terms of the the actual show itself um it, it's weird if you can imagine particularly for me that you you're watching everything through a camera if you like well i'm just looking at the little video yeah. screen in, in front so you know it's it's all a bit weird and surreal but um and you start off there. I am in the left. Yeah, just holding are. that the whole time. I think I got rigor mortis by the end of it. You know, my hands <laughs> were like, just like this because it was all handheld. Um, yeah. In terms of the main camera, and then we got quite a few cameras, as you you say. Uh, I got five. I brought, and I think you did. You have four, Warren. That you. I think brought? I brought. Yeah, brought a set as well, didn't I? Yeah. 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 So, so we'd got those those set up as well. But uh, just just actually the physicality of of holding this so it's not shaking uh, yeah. for a length of time. It's, say you, you, your muscles just going to spasm in the end, which helps. It's painful, but it helps because you can't move. Uh, so, so that's that's quite good. Um, but but once once you got over the start of it, I really really just enjoyed the music. Was just yeah. just brilliant. Uh, and and so as I say, it, it just feels felt a bit weird, almost as if I wasn't there, uh, because you, you're looking at it through through the camera. And then then you've got the concern about, you know, there's only one take for this. If I forgot yeah. to put all those batteries in that camera or, what, or whatever, you know, or forgot to set that one going, then there's there's no second chance. So uh, that's good. quite a bit of pressure. But once you, once you got started and the music went, it was just the atmosphere was just so electric. I've never been at a gig and, you, you know, I've been with you at quite a few gigs in the past. Never been at one like this. The actual feel of it was just was just remarkable and and then i echo what everyone else has said about the the actual environment was again surreal if i use that phrase it was just just amazing just just surreal and i, I think the two things for me uh in terms of the experience was like total ends of the spectrum on the one end of the spectrum do you remember i shared some of the driving with the old transit van <laughs> yeah in i was going to come <laughs> on to that later <laughs> to switzerland I won't, I won't spoil that but that there you are. You entrust me with your all your kit and your van, 
uh, and a few personnel. And th there's me that for the last, I don't know, 20 years have driven an automatic Volvo. <laughs> this tra manual transit van in France, driving at speed. I'd be um, lying if I said it didn't show, Alan. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, but I'll I, tell you one thing. I, I, thought, I, I, I thought the the screaming was a little disrespectful, but you know, <laughs> to, to be fair um, to you, Alan. Um, so for everyone watching, we went across. The tech crew went across in two vans. And Karen with her van, and um, you went. You had. Let's say you. I think you think you would have had James and uh, Duncan in your van. Uh, James, think, yeah, James and Duncan. Yeah. Yeah. And I had you, Alan, and Hannah in in our van, and we. Yeah. Every time I drove to Pisgora, there was this one bit on the motorway when I went on the on the recce, both there and back, and on the actual job, there and back, where I took the wrong blinking turning on my sat nav. Every time we went there, we went the wrong way. So we ended up getting, we went in convoy down that far, and we ended up getting split up, and I, I ended up just following the sat nav, and it took us right across the country. We went on like a, a six hour detour from the other van, and I was trying to catch up time because we'd obviously gone so far and we we're going down all these back roads do you remember and yeah, i was it must have been about three or four in the morning and i was motoring along this little country lane and out of nowhere this speed bump came up and there was no sign for anything i swear to god we got about 400 air miles off of that speed bump <laughs> honestly we we're all awake after that no no one fell asleep again after that i'm just glad i wasn't following you at that point <laughs> well the pit in the back as well i was oh we were kind of lucky i didn't burst a tire or something that, that was that was quite an experience and then at the other end of the spectrum do you remember when we got to his gloria I, I just thought it was bizarre to see the rolls royce driving around up there knowing <laughs> that there's no road up there yeah any access to that to the village it i've got a video of car. that i've got a video of that coming up on the cable car and that was it in the end i yeah. couldn't work it out but then we saw it slung underneath the cable car and it was it was george wasn't it george Lazenby. Yeah. it was his roller being yeah. chauffeur driven around that was so talk about you know from one extreme to the other the transit to the roller amazing amazing I got to just say another quick story from the the trip as well. Like from the from, this is from the recce actually. I when I went out with Brian from James Bond Radio for the recce, and uh, he drove us down there. And you'll and you probably those that drove out remember on the way down in Switzerland. There's a place genuinely. And this is going to get a little bit rude here for anyone watching. Uh, spoiler alert! But there's there's a place called Wankdorf. And as we're driving along the motorway, I saw this sign saying, you know, you're now entering Wankdorf. So I took a picture on my phone and put it on Facebook and said, I don't think we'll be stopping here. Quick as a flash, Tim Ames, the comedian, came straight in on the first comment and went, oh, surely you could just pull off quickly. <laughs> <laughs> the whole of the rest of the way to Pittsburgh, we were just crying with laughter every time we went through it again. Really, he's absolutely quality. Joe, I want to come to you finally. Um, out of you know, your memories as a as a fan, I know we've heard lots of um, from you, and you've been so kind with your comments. And and I don't think anybody could speak more about this event and and I have part in it than you have done. Uh, bless your cotton socks but um I, I if you've got anything left to add that you haven't already <laughs> added i'd love to hear what what it was like for you being in the crowd and hearing all those comments from the guys in the band and and if it sort of makes you think about any of it any differently really you know it's funny i i feel like as as much as i have spoken about this event honestly i could i could write a 500 page book about it and still never really find the words to sort of put it all together into one coherent thought yeah. I, you know I, I i've said to people i said you know imagine that you were such a fan of something that you literally dedicated like a part of your life to it you know mm -hmm. and then and then you have your your favorite like your top one of the of these for for decades and and it's the 50th anniversary you and and the other big hardcore fans are going to go somewhere to sort of celebrate this and then when you think about where you're going it's the key location of the film, a place that is, I mean, you're talking about the, 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 the limits of, of just what a human being can do. I mean, when you draw, when you go to this place, just going to Murin 
you're already up, you're way up in the Alps, and then you take another cable car, you get halfway up to the Berg station, and it's already like the most amazing view you've ever seen, and you're still mm. not even there yet. Yeah. So when we got there, I mean, honestly, you're talking about just the mecca of, I, like I said, I, I can't compare, I, I don't want to sound like I'm getting into hyperbole if I say this is the closest thing to a religious experience I can think of. I mean, I mean, something that honestly, like nothing you could do could rev ever hit such a, a, a perfect pinnacle and, and mm. you know, pun semi intended, I suppose. I mean, this was a peak of um, <laughs> experience. And so sure, I mean, when we were, you know, I had only heard about Cue the Music up until this point. I mean, I'd heard lots of good things about it. I, I you know, people told me about it. You have to see this band. I mean, this is the quintessential Bond band so when i you know heard you guys were gonna play i mean i was obviously just sort of over the moon i'm like oh my god and and sure enough this was like like i said i i, I don't mean to sound like i'm i'm just using hyperbolic words but whatever but this was like like an orgasmic experience i mean this was the the height of just everything had come together to perfection and and when so when the band was playing i mean this was it this was just the moment of moments uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it honestly just blew my mind. And when I think about just everybody sort of dealing with, like I said, I mean, this was this is this was kind of like the edge of human achievement. <laughs> the fact that we're in this location at the top yeah. of the Alps, one of the highest, you know, peaks in the world. Uh, you know, all I'm thinking about is, you know, and, and it's a good thing Carrie's not here because this way I won't embarrass myself gushing and fanboying too much. But honest, I mean. <laughs> Hearing you, I mean, hearing her sing the way she's singing with the lungs that she's got, and knowing where I am, that that just regular people are already starting to kind of feel the altitude problems. I was just kind of, I, I was like, wow, the fact that they can do this, I mean, it was just sort of amazing to me watching all you guys, especially Warren on on, on wind instruments and, and Carrie singing. I mean, it was pretty mind blowing. So yeah, like I said. I could I could gush for two years and still not have run out of things to say about this this night. Well, I'll come back I'll come back to you again in a minute or something. But I, I, while we've sort of mentioned the height, and I've got a question here: somebody asking, um, did we need recovery time singing wise and being at such an altitude? And I think it's something I would like to just talk about for a little bit because it was a real concern going to this gig for me. Um, I'd spoken to lots of people, and the opinions on this was quite varied as to whether we were going to feel it or not and of course his glory themselves are saying oh yeah we've had people playing up here before um and they had had people you know not very well and stuff but we actually had ox mini little oxygen tanks that i bought on stage i mean you can't see them there but they are dotted around that i i kind of picked out the the people i thought that would be probably using the most oxygen i.e the drummer kerry matt and the lead trumpet really and um we, i don't think we really needed them too much the end i don't remember anybody really pumping oxygen during the show but all day and as the day wore on and the gig got closer i, I think quite a few of us were feeling really ill i mean kerry i'd say an hour and a half before the show was really in trouble i mean really really upset you know she was um she was actually having trouble saying her words and and, uh, and singing her lyrics like actually getting the words out um and i think i've said this before but i actually had some herbal stuff in my um in my bag and i gave that to her and she she perked up but i do think the adrenaline of the actual concert helped all of us it certainly helped me but i'd be interested to sort of throw this out to the floor and see how other people responded because for me obviously i had a lot more probably had even more adrenaline than you guys because i had the added thing of being a lot of my mates being such the bomb fan that i am being that it's my all my baby as well and the ultra ultra uh, ultimately i was kind of essentially responsible for everything whereas you guys probably just had your one kind of job to concentrate on but matt what about you because i know you weren't feeling well were you no i wasn't feeling well at all i mean i, I think when you first sort of got the gig together when you knew it was going to happen you said oh it's a bit high um and you i think you said you don't know if you have altitude sick sickness or you suffer from altitude sickness at all and i said I, I do know and i do um so i knew going in it probably wasn't going to be great because i've had it just 
being at heights approaching this on mountains, just walking around. So I knew it was going to be a problem. Then, then I, thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say at the top of the Ritz. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> London. Yeah. yeah, a little dizzy there too. Um, yeah, so I, I was kind of anticipating a problem, but this this was uh, really the worst I've ever had it. I think the, the height we were at, the speed at which it came up, and the fact that we then had a job to do. Um, so yeah, I felt terrible. I had terrible sort of migraine and a heavy feeling and was short of breath constantly. You just feel like you can't recover. But then actually, when you get onto the gig, I don't know, I think to an extent, if singing is, is a natural thing, then you're as comfortable singing um, as you are doing anything else. Um, so actually just the act of singing wasn't a problem, but thought, but thinking how do we get mentally through the show? Like you're talking about how Carrie was feeling. And then we yeah. did, I went out to sing the first uh, number Thunderball, the first one I sing. Um, and all of those faces right there, and that wave of energy that everyone's talking about, and I was like, oh, well, you know what, this actually might be fun. Um, <laughs> so that, that was it. That was it, really. It was, um, it was just as well. It was, it was that audience for that environment. It was always going to be. Um, but that's really how it worked, I think, for me, anyway. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine if we were doing, like, the sort of classic corporate dinner event where we, exactly. where they weren't they're not even paying attention to what we're doing we do a few of them now and again i think would have been all gone by about the second yeah. verse of the first song yeah. and I, would, I did want to say I, I think i had an oxygen tank down there for just kind of through the show and i had done i think i'd, I'd had as much as anyone except perhaps for lee and i'm not sure if lee even needed it i think he just enjoyed it <laughs> so he was just uh, <laughs> Lifting himself on, up Lee. and up with that. Let's hear it from Lee. Let's let him loose. How was it for you, Lee, on the altitude? I mean, you were you were pumping away on that oxygen tank like you were you were about to drop your first child. As I said, I think with, with, with the um, with the I think I took paracetamol and aspirin, so I felt absolutely fine. But I just felt <laughs> you still have the oxygen anyway. <laughs> you spent the money on it, and I thought, well, it's not going to do any damage. <laughs> So I might as well just have a go, and it might, it might even improve stuff, you know. It didn't make any difference at all, but it, it might have done, you never know. <laughs> I think I've still got a couple of them down in my garage, actually, you know, just in case, just in case, Piz, well, Shilp will never ask us back. Steve, you were, you were really, really unwell, and, and as you were saying, I mean, you, you said I mean, you were kind of spaced out, blacked out uh, in the last, in the last one, didn't you, in the, the yeah. uh, remix with you later? yeah yeah um i did yeah yeah i <laughs> felt terrible um i mean i mean i it was right towards the end that it really hit and i think like what matt was saying like the adrenaline um like matt like i've i've done you know gigs very high up i kind of did some stuff in bhutan and nepal um and I, I was really really ill when i was there um like so much so that i had to kind of sit down for a gig because i just couldn't stand um and uh, so i was kind of uh, i was envisaging that it could be an issue um but yeah by the time we got to the gig um the adrenaline did kick in but yeah. i think that the tiredness um because we you know we'd all worked really really hard throughout the day to make sure that the show sounded you know a, as good as it could and yeah. you know and to do the music justice you know for the occasion yeah. you know we're all really really kind of just laser focused on that um, yeah. so I, you know, I was exhausted, probably like everyone was. Um, and by the last tune, yeah, I just started to space out, and I, I kind of like lost some time. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it's like, oh my god, like, we're on bar what now? Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so it was kind of like, you know, I, I've been like kind of on autopilot, and I think because I, I played through the tune so many times, like, you know. But yeah, I mean, I can see in the video now they are I'm swigging water, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try and kind of like battle the uh, the kind of like the the vertigo you know like that you get from alti altitude sickness you just start to feel dizzy and sick and yeah it's it's not nice but yeah it, it's a very i think I, th I think it's it's a very weird experience because the the adrenaline does get you through the majority of it but yeah it was, it was the end for me that kind of like where it really really hit hard so <laughs> I mean, I was feeling bad all day, but I, I never even thought about it once we started. Never even crossed my mind. Jez, what about you? How were you with it? 
I'm, I was honestly fine, really. I don't. Oh, remember. you said that early, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, I did. I don't remember feeling um, ill or you know, like anything particularly. You know, I was a bit tired, but I was tired before I got there. So you know, um, yeah. but I mean, it was. I think the adrenaline probably helped, and the fact that I'm sort of. I don't probably put have to put as much physical energy True, you know, into yeah. it as everyone else, you know. So because I'm sitting down, and I'm, you know, my hands are moving a lot, but everything else isn't. Although I was watching my head earlier in one of the funky bits of uh, living left eye, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, nothing compared to like Lee or you know the guys on the brass or something. You know, they're using a lot, probably a lot more energy, I should think. Um, well, one of the things I wanted to talk about here just while well, i noticed it um i mean apart from the fact that i talk a lot on this video and i think if i'd have halved the amount of things i i was, talk, was saying we could have put in another three tracks that we had on the list that we didn't get to do um but there we go i mean i tell you what talking about the comparing you know i mean i was thinking about what i was going to say for a year to to the most hardcore bond fans in, you know, in the world i mean normally when we do bond concerts we've got a madeline smith or caroline monroe or caroline bliss you know that that read the script which is kind of more tailored towards a, a more general bond fan that can you can sort of say and and probably need to say things like you know john barry composed 11 of the first 14 uh james bond films but you know for a crowd like this you really really don't want to be saying that sort of thing and i was really conscious of that and plus a lot of the people in the crowd had seen us before and i didn't want to sort of say that um so I really tried to kind of tell a few funny stories from our time and kind of do something a bit different. But it's it's always really difficult, I think, because, you, you know, it's getting the balance of um, not saying too much. But actually, you do need to talk a little bit. Otherwise, it's just music for the whole way through. But the, the one thing we talked about, just I talked about just before we started this track was the click track that we have all the time. And. Um, I wanted to just talk a bit about that, especially with the rhythm section guys here. Um, for, so for people watching, one of the things that I think really brings Cue the Music sound together in, in, and makes it sound the tightness that you know people sort of recognise it for is that we do play everything that we do to a click. Um, and I actually, I've had musicians, you know, give me a bit of a hard time about it that aren't involved in cue the music they don't understand and that's fine you know i recognize that and maybe you know matt or someone can talk a bit about this in a second but ideally you don't want to be playing with the click track if you can help it but for something like this where everybody knows it so well and the songs are so varied in the speed having that click track as as like a map to really keep you on course um i think is so important for our band and uh, also with the size of the band and the amount of different things going on we all have a click in our ear then you haven't got that thing of different sounds coming from different parts of the stage that you're reacting to you're actually already being proactive by just playing to what you're hearing uh, in your uh, in your ear and then trusting that everybody's doing a fantastic job and and, and it all slots together particularly with karen at, at the front to mix it all um Matt, I don't know whether what's it like for you playing with a click because it's not something that that you really do in any other uh, you know part of the profession that you you play in with you know other gigs and stuff. But I, I think you'd all agree it's sort of key for us, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, also sort of knowing how to use it in a in, in a musical way. So right now at this point, I'll have where we are in the in the show right now. I'll have the click way down because what I want to be doing percussively has to be right relative to Lee. That's the absolute. So Lee's got it up, he's laying down, and I, he's right next to me, and I'm putting it right where he is. There'll yeah. be other points, uh, say Moonraker or something, where there's just percussion keeping time and anything around that. But I have a quick click way up, so that then I'm the time, and then if other people want to just sit on that. So I think sort of knowing where the, where the sort of layer of time, where the instruction's coming from, is really important, and that way you can use it in quite a musical way. I will say, just to um, point out, when I've got the click on and I'm not playing, Jazz is playing, say, the opening, uh, Nobody Does It Better or something like that. The way Jazz can play around the click, to be on the click without being on it, is fantastic. So, you know, again, yeah. that's knowing how to use it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, that sort of um, harks to 
you know the the musician in us and the professionalism and experience and everything else you're right you know there is that little bit of leeway but at the same time that those points especially when jazz is playing on his own you know it's it's there as a guide really for when the song kicks in and also just to make sure that you don't you know don't start it like ridiculously slow or ridiculously fast or something um but i'll come to you in a minute jess steve what about for you because obviously you know relative this point relatively new to our band uh, what was it like coming in and playing with the click for you uh i mean i got quite a lot of experience playing with a click so it, it wasn't you know like a, a, a shock or anything like that i mean i've got no real issues playing with click at all i think it you know a, a click track for um you know for, as you were saying like for a band of this size and for the complexity you know it, it's it, it's there to to you know to aid you in what you're doing really yeah. it's, it's definitely not a hindrance and i think to be honest i mean you know i mean i'm not blowing my own trumpet here but you know hats off to the rhythm section for the fact that they can still make the music you know have a flow even you know with something that is strict time you know you wouldn't yeah. like from from my ears you wouldn't know that you know there's a click track in there it still kind of feels you know like uh, as you know as musical as it as it does on the record you know like i mean some people kind of say oh yeah it makes it very strict and you know that and it kind of sucks all of the you know the energy and the atmosphere out of the music and i you know i, I think i'd really disagree with that in this case because the the caliber of the musicians in the in the rhythm section really do make the music breathe and you know yeah. the click is just there just to you know to like I said just to aid you know it's there as a as a guide you know so um yeah i i think it's i think it's a, you know it's it's a really great thing um and also like to put all of this stuff together you know with a click and put all those you know the uh you know the the tracks together with clicks and everything like when you do that and you know if you've got different timing changes and sick time signature changes and stuff it's a it's a, it's a really difficult job to do that so yeah I think I think just uh, highlighting the point you're making really it's I think with us I think it's the energy we put on top of that click you know because as you say you could just play it robotically but you know I mean I think everybody I, I've deliberately chosen people that that will put that adrenaline and, and energy in and mm -hmm. flair and and you know willingness to put 101 percent in not you know, I mean, I don't want to say that a classic thing of 110, 150, whatever. But, you know, th there's one thing that I think is is so true in live performance that a lot of people, when they go out and play in public, will maybe just hold back a little bit for safety, you know, go maybe 90, 95 percent. And so that, you know, if you're going full, full pelt, there's more chance of an error. But I, I've always kind of said, look, that's not how we are. We go full pelt all the way, full throttle all the way. And if, you know, and luckily very rarely happens, but if there's the odd thing that goes a little bit awry, you've taken people on much more of a, of a, a emotional and, and um, energetic journey than, than if you don't do that. Mm. Jez, what about, what about your thoughts on, on, on that? On the, on the click? Yeah, um, well, and that in general. Yeah, I think we'll... Um... Matt made a good good point about the fact we do change the volume of it in our um, in ears, you know, because you've got to be thinking about like the how you can add to a song, you know, musically. And if you've got the click going there, distracting the whole time, then it's annoying. But I mean, the, the bits where I can maybe play around a little bit more and pull the tempo one way or other are really only the bits when I'm on my own or just me and Kerry, because. I couldn't I couldn't do that if you know otherwise it would just sound a mess so it, it works for those kind of duo bits you know like the beginning of Skyfall you can do it a little bit but um, and like you say I think we do we we add we give so much anyway that you know it doesn't sound I think Steve said it, it you don't you wouldn't necessarily know there was a click there because it doesn't sound metronomic and rigid it rigid it still sounds like it's got that musicality. Um, yeah. We we didn't do everything with the click though on this, did we? Because we didn't do the medley. We had a conductor. I mean, we were very yeah. lucky. Mm. We had um, a John Ward, who was a who was actually a conductor anyway, and a Bond fan uh, himself. That at the event as a fan, and and I just said to him, look, would you do us the honour of conducting? 
I mean, that had so that was so long with so many changes in. Um, it would have almost been, I wouldn't say impossible, but really, really hard to do it with a yeah. click and, and get it and get it right. And it and it, it that piece definitely did need the flexibility to be, um, you know, have a bit more freedom and go with the flow of it. Um, particularly with the transitions, you know, it's once you're into a section that's one speed, it's it's just just go and let it go it's fine but when you come to the end of a section going into a different speed it's that transition where it can be really really tricky if you've got a pre-programmed click then you've got no flexibility whereas if you've got somebody conducting you can really make more music out of that yes are there, are there other ones that we don't have click on as well though aren't there i think is it writings on the wall that's true yeah yeah, yeah that's true but we do have what we do have with that is we have steve at the back on the bass he counts on the mic that that mic only goes into our headphones he's actually got two mics at the back and bless him you can never really see steve in these videos but he's got two mics he's got one for his backing vocals which does go out the front and then we've got this whole system which just goes into our ears so that you know i've got one as well there's a mic somewhere behind me that you can't see where i can talk to all of you guys but the audience can't hear it unless Karen stitches me up and turns it up. <laughs> and I'm swearing swearing at Lee or something. That's <laughs> my word. Some funny things on there between us on there. Yeah, it's good actually. You can, it's good you can have a bit of banter. But you know those days of the, the old days where you, where for me when I used to have to shout across the stage or something. You know, if we changed the number and it's like, you know, if you skipped the number, I'm like, guys, golfing your next. You know, like shouting it. But you've got to shout, shout it in four different directions to get all the people in on the stage. And now it's just you can just say it into the mic everyone gets it it's just so much more professional and, and slicker from that i think that's the other point about the click is if you haven't got a conductor and you can't all see each other then yes. you really do need it i think yeah. if, you, if you can't see each other but you can all see the conductor that's fine if you can all see each other and not have a conductor you can probably manage but if you haven't got those things then you know it's the only way you can do it and ensure it's actually going to be you know consistently right really Mm. We, we actually did an event not long after this for Alan and Heath who make the system that we're using and uh, the band was split so we had the rhythm section on the lower level it was underneath this um, the, the, the second level so the brass and um, I think Kerry was down the bottom but all the brass were up the top the six of us up the top and we couldn't see each other because we were right above with the floor between us it was literally because, a balcony yeah yeah, and we had because we had that system where we all had headphones and we had a mic on top and a mic down the bottom, we could communicate what we were doing and everything else. And we couldn't see each other, but the performance still came out just like this. I mean, Alan and Heath couldn't believe it, you know. And I was saying, well, this is the this is the best endorsement ever of your product because, you know, here we are, we are able to to play in basically two parts of the building in perfect time with each other because of this system that we use. So. But I want to move on to, um, in fact, I'm going to move back a little bit to the beginning of the um, of the performance because something happened at the start of this performance, which has never, ever happened in the history of Cue the Music, in that we actually stopped halfway through a piece and, and uh, had to start again. Because Martin Mulder, who's the event organiser, came down and said, look, you know, we're ready to go. We were running a bit late by that point, not long, but a bit late. And he said, you know, can you do something to get everybody down um, to, to, to sort of down to this level? Because they were all upstairs in the restaurant. And we weren't going to play the Majesty's actual main theme tune because we were doing so many cues later on. I made the decision to, to cut it. Difficult decision, but I felt that, you know, we, we were doing so much Majesty's, we weren't going to do anything else. Um, so I, we didn't do it. We were going to start with the James Bond theme, which is at the start of this video. So I made the call. I said, well, I'll tell you what, let's play. I turned around on the spot and I said, let's play Majesties. Use the microphone. I said, let's play Majesties to get everybody down for the start of the show. And then we'll start with the James Bond theme. Um, so we and so, Alan, you were panicking, weren't you? Because you, you didn't have enough time on the cards and batteries and stuff to record that as well. Yeah. So we had to sort of make a, a decision not to record video, the performance of that theme, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's your usual curveball, but I haven't seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> but then we got through that, and then of course we were going to start because you said to me, oh, "I won't start the cameras till after this one." Then, but then yeah. in the adrenaline of the moment, we finished Majesties. Everybody had come down to see, you know, the theme tune to Majesties, and I said, "Right, let's go." Started the James Bond theme, and I realised that you probably only started one of the ten cameras recording at that point, and I thought, well. We can't not capture this. We've got to get this on film. So I had to sort of turn around and say, stop, stop, stop. And actually, it kind of, everybody kind of reacted to it so much better than I ever thought would happen if that ever did happen in a, in a gig. Um, you just, you know, because, you, I mean, you've waited, we've waited a year and a half for this moment. All these people in front of us, everybody's willing to us. And when you finally go and it's like, oh, bugger, we've got to stop and start again. <laughs> It could have been such an anticlimax, but it was just everybody just went again, and it was it was great. That I, I, that was really great. Yeah, it almost warmed the audience up, you know, Warren. Yeah, yeah, because I think I'd made a joke of it, didn't I? And, and I think I I swore so much when I was doing this comp. Um, I've cut some of my swear words out of the, the actual video because it was funny actually. Of all the people to to get to sort of berate me afterwards, Kerry was the one that said to me. <laughs> A bit of a potty mouth tonight, was her? <laughs> Bless her. But um, Steve, this moment here, you had a bit of a mare, didn't you? Oh, Can you man, remember yeah, was, what happened? I, I was just about to say, yeah, that was um, that you were just saying, you know, one of the first things, you know, to happen to the band. It was actually one of the first times I've ever broken a string on stage in a live performance yeah. um, and had to uh, switch guitars, which is why I've got a different color guitar now. In the video, <laughs> yeah. In this, um, you're, talking yeah. About, you're talking about this solo here, and nobody does it better. You, yeah, when you yeah. started the solo, you, your string has snapped, hadn't it? Yeah. Which, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I realized afterwards, I was like, oh, yeah, it's probably something. That's gonna, it's the tension, like when you go up and the, the air pressure changes, it has an effect mm. on instruments. And even though it was brand new strings, um, you know, it can have an effect on there. Hello. Um, you know, when you have, when you put guitars in holds and stuff like that, and it's not pressurized, they can just, you know they can get really damaged um, yeah yeah holds on planes i mean um but yeah I, I, it was something that i was like i was like why is this string broken is there something wrong with the you know <laughs> you know, a dud pack of strings or something you know and then suddenly realized after the guy oh, now it's probably just the altitude but um but yeah i had to had to rip the string out because it was kind of getting it i was still soloing and it was getting in the way of all of the other strings and i was kind of doing this and my hands going over the top just getting rid of the broken string <laughs> yeah i yeah. thought you were doing an eddie van halen tapping oh uh, if I, yeah no that was definitely what i was doing sorry i just i i, I retract everything i just said i was definitely tapping. <laughs> yeah um I wanted to talk about the what it was like getting in and getting out because this is something that nobody ever sees um now for the guys in the band you, you'll have they to never excuse. see it either no we'll have to excuse by the way this i've realized i've used the old video from last year here so we're we're about to go on our 2020 tour here look this is this will make everybody <laughs> cry won't it all these no. dates that we were supposed to do we got cancelled anyway um yeah we 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 did two yeah we did two but we the the actual um uh, the fun part, I say fun part. I mean, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but shifting two van loads of kit, I think it was probably about two or three tons worth of equipment up the mountain on four cable cars, which Karen, Alan, myself, James, Duncan, and uh, Hannah did. Uh, that was uh, fun, wasn't it, Alan? Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was quite a challenge, wasn't it? In, in fact, I was able to cash in my gym membership afterwards. <laughs> it was it, 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 at that height as well. Um, yeah. It was amazing. And do, do you remember as well, um, not being racist, but there were so many Chinese people around that don't like queuing and and they kind of got in the way almost like deliberately because they didn't, although we were allowed there. You know that was an added nightmare. I'd, I hadn't factored in the Chinese factor on the on the day, <laughs> and uh, uh, that was that was quite a challenge. Uh, well, we were yeah, that. we were negotiating yeah. crowd, weren't we? Yeah, we yeah. the guess. Yeah, 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 ab absolutely. But there were, I think there were coach loads of people who just landed at the same time as we were. We were trying to get all the equipment up there. Um, yeah, but, uh, quite. Yeah, it, so. 
Quite it was, and we we got up. I mean, I got up there. I think I was up there at eight o'clock in the morning on this morning of this concert. And uh, oh, sorry, sound. Yes, someone's just asked me to put sound on. And this is the most important bit as well. The Majesty's medley. Um, yeah, the the. Uh, uh, I was up there at 8 o'clock in the morning. I think gradually people from the band kind of rolled out of bed and came and joined me in the sound team, what have you. And, but we were, I think from 9 o'clock all the way through, pretty much, we were setting up um, sound checking. And it was such a massive setup, wasn't it, Karen? Um, yes, it was. It was the full normal show, but in a small space, basically. I mean, the only thing that we didn't have to set up was an actual stage, which is... Uh, makes a change because uh, we have one normally, with us though. We, we, we had did one. Have, we'd have we didn't with use us. it. We didn't use it. <laughs> Luckily, but yeah, we had risers. We had risers, but if we'd have used them, we'd have had everybody would have been literally <laughs> bent over a ceiling, ceiling yeah. level. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was the it was the full kit, the full tour, the full tour kit um, went up there. Yeah. Uh, and so it was, you know, including the, as you can see from the video, all the lighting and everything. So it's, it's not just the sound equipment. So it's, a, it's all the lighting and all the power stuff that goes along with it. And it's, yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, one of my, it's one of my, one of my, um, the, the best bits was one when it was all done and dusted and we were just reveling in the joy of it, of, of pulling it off and, and it had gone well. But I mean, people never understand how much, you know, goes into those days before. And then afterwards, we all pat down probably an hour. Then we had to shift as much kit as we could. I mean, some of it stayed until the morning after to come down. It was but, a record you know, a record takedown, wasn't it? It was because everybody mucked in, which was great. Yeah, yeah. But it was lovely because we got to go down and have a few beers. I remember having a, having a drink with you, Joe, which was amazing. But I was absolutely wiped out. I mean, I think the day before with the journey over, I'd been up for 36 hours straight or something with the drive over and then the hotel wasn't ready and getting kit up to the first level and stuff. And it's one of the things people would say to me after theatre shows, oh, can we go for a drink after or something? And I'm like, honestly, it, you've no idea. These can be like 20 hour days, these show days. Mm. But um, anyway, there we go. Let's talk a bit about this medley then, because this is the real moment I think people will want to, to, to sort of hear about. I mean, reflecting back on it now, it, it doesn't, I don't really feel like I, as the, the angst and the anxiety I had about whether this was going to sort of, we were going to pull this off. I don't feel it as much now as what I know I did at the time. Like I can't really like roll myself back to feel how i felt then but it was some undertaking to do this when we really didn't have any rehearsal we had a run through on the day which we didn't really have a run through because you remember george lazenby rocked up halfway through our run through and we had to stop playing and then we had to turn all the volume off so the only guys coming in our ears were the rhythm section and then all the brass how we just had to like play everything sort of whisper quiet I, what were your memories of going into this medley? Did you think that we were going to... Did you? Did anybody else worrying that we weren't going to actually be able to do it? Matt, can, what about for you doing this solo here as well now? Matt, have you frozen? You're there. Definitely. You've, Matt, I mean, we can't hear you. Uh, Sorry. Have you got me? Yeah, got you now, yeah. Do you want to throw it to someone else? No, we got. Okay. I think we, you're coming um, and going. Try it. We'll try it. Yeah, again. this this was definitely um, okay. Um, not not uh, on your scale, I'm sure, but a little anxiety as well. Yeah, it's a lot of changes. It's a. Uh... Okay. We keep losing you, Matt. Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to jump out and come back in, and we'll see if that kicks it back in. There's a delay. Uh, um, Steve, what about for you? You, you jump in. Sure. How? What, what were you thinking? Uh, yeah, just. I mean, I was. I was thinking actually that like about what I remember from the uh, from this this medley, like before, uh, like during during today, rare day off today. Um, I actually looked back over some of the scores actually, <laughs> just to kind of remind <laughs> myself of of you know what I had to play and everything, and just yeah. I mean, it's incredible, like the all the cues and everything, and. Like I think it sounded great, but yeah, I remember the, 
I remember the, 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 the pressure and the anxiety on the day, um, you know, just, you know, you know, not having, you know, as much time as we, you know, wanted, you know, or needed to be able to get through it and everything. And, you know, was trying to get the sound right at the same time and everything. So there was a lot of pressure, but I think it, you know, I, I think it's a, a really good, you know, kind of testament to the caliber of the musicianship, you know, I, and I mean, like you were saying about the horns, especially to the horns, you didn't really get to run through it properly, did they? I mean, not from what no. I, you know. So, no. Um, so yeah, I think I think yeah, it's great. But yeah, I, I remember the remember the pressure. Um, I, you know, I remember you sweating quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jez, what about you? Because you had so many things to think about in this medley. I mean, I think what was it? We counted. Was it? Was it 28 different patch changes you had to do on keyboards during oh, this one at, piece? At least, yeah. Was, I was really, ner- really, um, nerve you know, felt really nerve-wracking um, because I think we didn't actually run through the whole thing, did we, in one go in the, as, no. in the rehearsal? We, we just did bits, and there's so many awkward changes, um, tempo changes, and. For me, I think one of the hardest things was probably the, all the repeated bits because there's a lot of bars look repeats. You know, when you've got like, is it Gone Bolt Safe? You know, the, all those, um, you know, the synth stuff that's going on and thinking, just focus, watch the music. But then you think, oh no, I've got to watch the conductor as well. So yeah. it's, it's that added um, element with this. But no, it was a real buzz, but it was very nerve wracking. Um, and as I said, some of the sounds I think I programmed the last few things on the train on the way, you know, to meeting you guys at the airport in Basel. And um, I barely even got to try them out uh, before <laughs> it was, you know, the actual the, the gig, you know. Yeah. Um, but it, luckily it all came off really well. And, um, you know, I think everyone, you know, everyone played great. I've got a question for you all then. Um, Joe, I think you're probably going to win this one. Um, out of all of us, we all got to meet George Lazenby on the day. He spent probably a good 15 minutes chatting to us, which was amazing. How many people on this stream right now have met another James Bond at any other point? Anyone? Um, Even Joe, have you? Uh, we, I don't playing? think so. I, I, I've... I've been in the same room. I, I did I did get to an event where Daniel Craig was speaking on stage and I got to ask a question. That's pretty much that's as close, close as I'll yeah, that's about <laughs> as close as I'll ever get, probably. So <laughs> what was it like one. what was it like to because you I mean you must have obviously had chance to, to speak to George Lazenby a number of times over the, 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 the week that you were there. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty surreal, honestly. Uh, because I, I had done the first part of the trip in Portugal. And we were all staying in the same hotel. We were all staying in the pal- the Palacio that was in the, the film. So, and George was in the same hotel. So, pretty much from the first night, the end of the day, we're all kind of heading down to the same bar and, and all kind of relaxing together. So it was it was like I said, it was pretty surreal. It's like oh my god, this is I'm just sitting next to James Bond hanging out. So yeah, it was pretty wild. Yeah, well. I've got a little something here. Now, a really good friend of mine uh, sent this through. Now, I'm going to be honest here. I cracked and had. I was supposed to leave it as a surprise until this stream, and I cracked and thought, I better know what I'm opening here because it could be anything on live, uh, <laughs> live on this stream. And when I opened the envelope, the the uh, the letter that he sent, and it's it's addressed from Anders Fr- uh, Fridge, who's George Lazenby's manager. So I had a fairly good idea of this size kind of what it could be so he said uh, to my friend Warren I was tempted to drive uh, to hand this to deliver this to you but postal pragmatism uh, prevails I'd love to see the look on your face when you open it if you can wait until June the 1st and the Piz Gloria run through it'll make for a very special moment equally I will like it regardless but I'll leave it up to you but a gift from a friend um blah 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 the rest of it's sort of personal for me so bless his cotton socks he's got in touch with George Lazenby's uh, manager to send us a photo and you're going to love this this is just a beautiful moment (laughs) 
This is a signed. I'm going to make the screen a bit bigger here, hopefully. Yeah. Signed message from George Lazenby, and it says, wow. "Warren, you did John Barry proud." George Lazenby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Very amazing. Cool. <laughs> yeah, get cool, <laughs> it. How special is that? Do you, do you think? Great. Do you think that might be going on my wall? <laughs> do you think? Wow. I think so. <laughs> Graham, if you're watching, thank you so much. That's beautiful. And, and special thank you to George and Anders, obviously, for sending that through. Uh, absolutely amazing. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, That's you know, could we, could we ever have imagined that something like that will happen for Cue the Music? Really not. Really, really not. Yeah, um, yeah it makes you so proud. It really does. Um, so... Joe, we've talked a lot about the, the sort of atmosphere in the room for when we were playing this piece. And, I mean, it really... I think there were so many different emotions going on, but to hear the music being played live in a location where that... where it was actually... what it was actually written for, mm. that's so unique, isn't it? I mean, that was the thing that really appealed to me about putting this medley together, was the fact that it's probably never been done anywhere no. else, I wouldn't have thought. That, that's no that's so true honestly I not only right not only are we here for this event you know and, and I talked earlier about just the, the moment that this was but you're absolutely right these were tracks that I never I probably will never I mean until I get to see cue the music possibly in the future hopefully but honestly I mean these are tracks I've never seen performed ever before and possibly never again again celebrating the film that we're all there to celebrate i mean it was it was just surreal honestly um and honestly th there, there is a real reason why like i have i have cue the music on dvd and i have cue the music on cd i love listening to the cds all the time but there is something different about watching these live because honestly especially for a you know a rube like myself i don't know you know, I don't play on an instrument. I don't really know music. So I really get a charge watching you guys do it live and seeing the, the barrage of different instruments and things. It's like, oh, wow, that's how this this sound comes together. You know, so it, it, it really is sort of a just a um, it's mystical. You know, I mean, it, it is sort of a, just an amazing experience watching you guys put the stuff together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it was mystical and, and it was, I mean, amazing to, to play it. I, I can't even tell you the emotions I was going through as a Bond fan. I had to really kind of keep them in check because I needed to concentrate and make sure that I didn't get, the fan part of me didn't overtake <laughs> to actually delivering the job, you know. Mm. There's a moment at the very end of Gumball Safe where I have to play this little pearly trumpet solo. I talked about it a bit on the DVD and stuff, but it, I, I was... Get, got to the end of this 18 minute medley, medley and everybody had absolutely nailed it and I was thinking if I split this now if I cock this up I'm going to have ruined everybody's great work you know <laughs> they've, they've come come up trumps for me and god help me if I, yeah so I'd have really drawn a lot of experience for that but uh, going back to something that Steve said earlier on there there was such a collective spirit in the band about doing this I think it was it really was such a great bit of teamwork and and like a joint collective focus to to all be the sum of the parts of this amazing performance and i that's something that i don't think i've really i mean you experience you do experience it actually but it's it's rare when it really comes together like this isn't it steve when you really feel everyone's really under pressure but everybody around you is so capable and you you, you know you're just you're creating something special in that moment yeah yeah it's, i mean i don't know just listening back to this like it's it's incredible I, I i don't it's difficult to put into words really like i was just really enjoying the chords for a second a minute ago so i probably zoned out of what we were all saying but there was just some, <laughs> there was some lovely chords going on there a second ago <laughs> so you, um, i hope you guys can see the the crowd too there's a good shot like i could see on the left the crowd watching i mean we were just watching this so intently you know, I mean, we were mesmerized at this point. This was, this was again, this wasn't simply like, I mean, I've seen live music before, but this was so precise. You know, I mean, we, we, I, we just could not stop watching this. 
Uh, I there's a, a moment coming up at the end of the piece when Stephen Saltzman, of course, Harry Saltzman's son, gets on stage and and uh, says a couple of things. I might turn the volume up for that bit, but I, at this point, I could see him just off in right in my eye line, probably about eight feet in front of me. And all the way through the show, I, I had this sort of thing. Every time I looked at him, I felt I just thought his jaw just keep keep dropping further and further to the floor. <laughs> and during his piece, it was like I literally he was just standing wide, o- eyes wide open, like he couldn't believe what he was seeing. And it, I was actually really tickling me the more it went went on. I think especially towards the end when we did the. Um, I think we did all of this and Joe you've talked a bit about this on your podcast and we did the remix at the end and I think that's when yeah. I think we really just blew everyone's minds because it was like hang on a minute are you really going to do something so extremely diff- you know extreme different I, I, to- especially at, right especially after this because honestly like I, you know you know you and I have talked before and I've sort of said like I, I sometimes think visually so I, I use references to art and and you know like like visual art and, and and watching something like this, it's somewhere between watching like like between fine art and architecture, because we're we're watching the precision in in, in which you guys are able to recreate music that we're very familiar with. I mean, again, we've listened to this ad nauseum. So the fact that you guys were able to sort you know with such precision be able to recreate it, um, right? And then later, going from this to the propeller heads. Like I, I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even know that was possible. I thought you didn't, you didn't if, wait till the day. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I thought if the band was geared to play like John Mary, going back to the '60s, I thought, well, well, it's a whole different kind of orchestra that you would need for that. But you guys just uh-huh. did it, and, and and just you just segued over to this. I mean, it was amazing to me, honestly. Jez, I think that's a lot to do with the players, though, isn't it? You know, we, we I've always said you know you can go out as a band leader and find someone who's amazing at blues or amazing at classical or amazing at you know pop covers or whatever but actually the the trick with cue the music is finding people that are comfortable in uh, and adapt to all these different genres aren't they (laughs) yeah there's that great reaction i mentioned so good i love your reaction there warren that's amazing it is i think everyone's really versatile and you have to be with um, the Bond, Bond music because even in the themes there's so much variety, so many different things um, and yeah, like you say Warren, we're all, all the people in Key the Music are, are capable of working in lots of different, different genres and doing it well, you know, because you, you, you can't, um, you know, you, you can't just um, do it okay you've got to do it really well to yeah. really make it work yeah I, if you could bottle the feeling of that moment just then and just relive it it's it's what it's what all hard work the slogging you know slogging through rehearsals and practice and here we go you did my dad proud <laughs> I was trying to give him a hug there <laughs> and then I did but <laughs> I was, yeah, I literally uh, what can i say after that? like where, where can we go after this? i had a feeling with the with the band for a, quite a little while after this gig was like where can what can we do now like we how do we go where do we go from there you know um it took quite a while i think to really to go back to normal life actually after this after that mm. feeling lee we haven't heard from you for a little while and we've 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 you haven't spoken for so long it's actually gone dark in your part of the world in your <laughs> <laughs> you're barely seeing like now two minutes <laughs> all right i was going to ask you a question but i'll wait till you get back now <laughs> <laughs> He's illuminated. There you go. <laughs> How was the medley for you? Because you didn't have a lot to do in that, but when you did, when you did have to come in, it was important. I mean, you sometimes you sat there for a couple of minutes not playing anything, but then you've got to, and you because you don't read music, you got to come in. Were you, how was it for you? Were you nervous about that? Absolutely. I mean, I was listening to that track probably uh, a lot more than the entire set, you know, gearing up to the gig. Um, 
and uh, I was memorising it and memorising all of the, the cues. But obviously, experiencing working with a conductor is a whole different animal to memorising any music, really. So having to pay attention to what the conductor was doing uh, and, and memory as well, it, it, I actually felt quite comfortable because I can't imagine what everybody else was going through reading it physically reading it and also looking at the conductor and reading it. I just kept looking at the conductor because I knew in my mind what was coming next. Yeah. But I was yeah. very nervous, but we, we, we all fired on all cylinders and we all did, you know, we all did the best we could and it sounds amazing and it, it shows. Yeah. And we're on sort of home territory for you now. And these, I mean, this is where these two songs, you know, my name, another way to die is where you really get to uh, let your, Tear down what what you have of it. Absolutely, yeah, it's great fun. <laughs> I think I think I really think that your energy in these two songs are what just lift it into a different level. I think everybody would agree with me on that. You know, mm. it, it, this is really where you come into your own on these two songs. I appreciate and that. Look at you. you. Look at you. Look at your face there. Look. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, amazing. When you're when you're like thumping those drums as hard as you are here, are you are you going through a paint barrier at this point in the gig? Because you must be tired, <laughs> and, you, and you're still finding the energy. Are, are you going through the paint barrier a little bit towards the end? I find it. Um, I actually find the show in itself. Um, I feel that this is the pinnacle of adrenaline for me when it comes to this. So you're so just running on that. I, I I actually feel that that's the the height. Of adrenaline, so I'm just I'm enjoying it for as much. I, I don't get tired as much. It's it's more of the the height of the adrenaline at that point. So I'm just mm. riding it and enjoying enjoying the ride, shall we say? Yeah, it's your moment to be uh, in the limelight, there, isn't it? This is one of my favourite parts of the the show because Lee and I get to headbang as he plays like double bass drum pedal at the end. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I did it. I don't think I did it here for fear of the vertigo, but on normal shows. <laughs> I usually turn around and we're headbanging. <laughs> Always, man. Uh, I, it's funny, isn't it? Because at the end of this song, quite often, just before we do Another Way to Die, if I get chance, I'll just say on the mic, I'll say, take the effing roof off now or something. And we're already playing as loud as we physically can play in this song. And yet we still seem to find another gear for Another Way to Die, don't we? Yeah. Dig deep. I mean... It's funny because Joe, you were on, you were watching last night on the premiere and talking about, you know, another way to die, and you, you're not a fan of the song. Uh, you weren't, you weren't until you heard this. But I would, I really wanted to know at what point did, did you, uh, did you kind of go? Actually, I really, I'm actually going to, I'm enjoying this. Did well, it, you it know, get you straight away? I don't, I, I'm not, I don't, probably not right away at some, I mean, it, I, at some point during, it, it kind of came over me. In fact, it's interesting. I was going to ask earlier, when you guys did Dirty Love, I, I sort of had a theory pop up in my head. And I was wondering, like, I mean, because Cue the Music is notorious now for taking those songs that a lot of people don't like and, and making converts. You know, all of a sudden now we're fans of the song that we didn't like yesterday. And I'm wondering, like, is it because... Cue the music just has sort of a quality that that you, you sort of bring all the songs up a notch, or do you think maybe because people don't like some of these songs that you guys have taken liberties and and you have a little more fun with these than 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 the other songs? Well, I ask this question lots, and I, I'd love to sort of get the other guys' opinions, um, and I'll maybe sum up at the end. Um, um, Jez, you, Jez, you and Matt give us your opinions on this because you've been with the band for a long time and we'll probably have an interesting point of view on this. Jez, you go first. Um, that's a hard one to answer, actually, I think, for me. Um, I'm not, like, super familiar with the... Okay, I, 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 with, with the actual original versions of, you know, some of the newer things like, like this, you know, that we listen to at the moment. Um, I mean, obviously, I've heard them, but... And I think my initial, like, like when I heard, first heard um, writings on the wall, I wasn't wasn't in love with it. You know, I didn't think it was anything all that special. But then when we played it in the band, it sort of brought it to another place. So I've kind of experienced that effect myself. You know, being in the band, um, and it's con converted me to songs that I thought actually, you know, 
I wasn't keen on. Um, why it is, I don't know. I don't know if it's just. I think it is partly is the energy that we bring, and especially Kerry, knowing what she's, the, what she can give um, to songs like you know, like uh, Writings on the Wall and Skyfall, and you know, just that raw emotion and power. Um, yeah. Um, Matt, yeah, what, I mean, do you, what do you think, Matt? Have you got anything? Oh, we can't hear you again, Matt. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> can't hear you at all. Alan, as the, uh, as the sort of, the kind of, the sort of outsider who's on the inside, what do you think? Go, go on, I lost my connection here originally. Oh, what, so the question was, was the, question? The, question, the question was, how, why is it that people feel, I mean, this isn't us saying this is people outside, Joe asked the question, why do people um, say that they enjoy some of the performances of some of the songs that we do more than the originals? Yeah, that's, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, I think, personally, because I, I feel that as well, and personally, on the tracks that I like uh, best, I think it's emotion. It's definitely emotion, both from, from Kerry, obviously, uh, Lee, I'm a massive fan of Lee, as I, I'm, I'm a very amateur drummer, and to watch Lee is just like, you know, seem like the best drummer you could think of. So. I pick up on stuff like that from members of the band, uh, and so it's it's a it's a whole mix of all of that. And I, I think it's like a good it's like a good Mary Berry recipe. You know, the the end product is is the sum of its parts, and yeah. uh, you've just got some great musicians. And you over the years, I think as well, you've got that feel for each other that yeah. actually I think if you were all blind and just about deaf you'd still play in tune you'd still play it to the best of your ability because you just kind of bounce off each other as musicians so that that's my feeling on on those tracks and there are quite a few where I prefer the way you do them to the originals they've just got more emotion it's funny because Kerry and I have actually had conversations when we've done some new songs. I think the, the last one I can definitely remember was with No Time to Die. We did it for the first time. And we ran it about three or four times in the sound check. We played it for the very first time and it was, it wasn't good. I mean, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel like a cue, the music performance. And I just said to, to Kerry, you know, we need to, and at the words I use, we, we need to cue the music this up. And I said to her, you need to carry it up. And she, what do you mean? And I said, just put more of you into it. it you, you know, it's too almost sanitized and it's too, you know, you're trying to do it too cleanly. And I said, if you take it up a level, I mean, I think one of the criticism I've heard, you know, I don't necessarily think this is the, the, this is the case. But one of the things people level is that they don't feel that it goes into a fourth gear with um, the original of No Time to Die, for example. And, and, I, and I said to Kerry, you know, when we do it live, we've got, we've got to take people up another level. We've got to find another gear. So I, I put a, a sort of fatter um, orchestration under her and basically just told everyone to play up towards the end. And then she opened up another gear. And I think that's the sort of thing that, that sort of really helps. I mean, writing's on the wall. I think she just pours so much emotion into it. And I think that we kind of really give her a bed to, to really sit on with the sound. Um, I think that's kind of one of the reasons for it. I mean, something like Another Way to Die is just an adrenaline rush. And, you know, it's just go for it, full pelt all the way through. The original perhaps is quite, again, sanitized, studio recorded. It doesn't have that life of the live performance. Karen, what do you think is the... You get to stand at the front of every single gig we've ever done and, and hear it. I do, it. yeah. Um, well, to me, the difference is the fact that it's live as opposed to recorded. Um, obviously, when you hear you know, all, all the tracks played on the radio or whatever, you're hearing the uh, studio recording of it. And and anyone that's any musician that's recorded in a studio will know that it's never the same atmosphere as, as playing live, which is... I mean, why this, the, you know, the live video that we're watching now is so different because it's, while it's recorded, it's still, it's still live. But um, studio stuff can be very clinical. And I, I think certainly with the, you know, the latest one, No, no Time to Die, it, it does, 
like you say, sound very clinical because there's no um, no atmosphere to it. Whereas when Kerry sings it, she puts she puts heart and soul into it, which isn't in the in the recording, and it makes a difference to the overall um, atmosphere of the song. Yeah, absolutely. So at this point, I think it's. I think that wasn't at this point, but they're coming up in a couple of songs' time, Karen. You had to tell me that we were running over. Do you remember? So I've, <laughs> I, do, I can, yeah. I can I've hear got you. Talk, I have, I've got talked back into the the band's ears as well. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and you basically told me that the they Piz Glory had said they were the last cable car was going to be leaving without the crowd. That's right. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we had I, four I, encores lined up. We had. I had, we the manager do... come, I had the manager coming over to me telling me that the, the cable cars were leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody was going, yeah. Yeah. But we finished this gig, we still had another three numbers that I wanted to do. We had we were gonna do the James Bond theme, which Tom Sears was gonna get up and play the guitar part. We were gonna do uh Do You Know a Christmas Trees Are Grown, in which all the, the Bond girls that were up there um you know the angels of death from the film they were going to come up and sing the chorus parts and they'd had a rehearsal for this and everything but then i got them i got them and we'd obviously run a bit over time and i got the message that they'd left so i knew that one because they were i think they were all shattered and, and they'd gone back down um or got one of the cable cars before they left without them yeah <laughs> So and then also i wanted to finish with surrender which is one to bring kind of kerry back in for the final one after we did the majesty's remix but i had a bit of a devil's choice there between the four and i think on balance we definitely picked the right one because that remix um it it was it was the one place we're ever going to do we had to do it there in fact lee it was your suggestion to do that wasn't it i love the track and and i love the film and um obviously that film means a lot to me because obviously I love Pierce Brosnan and I uh, still do and uh, Tomorrow Never Dies is a great film obviously when I was a you're child getting, growing you're up you're getting your you're getting your backseat driver mixed up with the with the uh, that's oh, propeller oh, heads oh, yeah. as well propeller heads yeah, um, yeah. oh propeller heads no, is I'm another talk- great one I'm, I'm talking about the most the, on the most secret service one at the end that we did oh that was oh uh, that Propel- was propeller heads as well, as well. Yeah. Heads, yeah. yeah as well <laughs> yeah yeah that's why my mind's yeah um, I love that track yeah I mean I've always loved it, and I love the the grooving in it. And um, I mean, you actually showed it to me a long time ago, and, and I was like, "We've got to do this." You said, "Listen to this; you'll you'll love this." I remember you sent it to me, and I was like, "Oh, I love that!" And I love the all of the you know the the, the, the grooves um, and all the it just it's a great track, it really yeah. is. I think it finished off the night with a bang. You know, it took the roof off. Definitely, definitely. I remember I buying to... that on a CD single. <laughs> Did you? When it, when it came out, yeah. What was it? Ni- oh, Nineteen. When, when was it that it came out? Uh, well, that was the Shaken, not Shaken and Stirred album. David Arnold Shaken and Stirred album. Yeah, I think I've still got it somewhere. My CD single. <laughs> of it. It's my favourite track from the album. I don't know about you, about you, Joe. It's, I think it's the. It's I, it's a great I, track, isn't it? I, I absolutely I, I think that is by far the most memorable on that that whole uh, project. It was, I mean, it's, it's very interesting album and the whole thing is good, but that that is the far and away the one that stands out the most. And by the way, I'm just kind of mesmerized watching Carrie do this one. Talk about mm-hmm. songs that didn't really get me initially, but when she does it, it's a whole different story. I, I've had people I've had people who are very who know music much better than I do. Kind of try to talk me into this song. Tell me like eh, it's it's a lot better than you gave it credit for. When I see Carrie do it, I get it. Yeah, I I do think it's a beautiful piece of music. I think that it doesn't get the credit it deserves. But um, I I mean I think the criticism of the last couple of songs is that they're all starting to sound the same. I mean we've had three ballads back to back now: mm. Skyfall, uh, Writings on the Wall, No Time to Die. Uh, and they they do all have a quite a familiar feel to them, but I mean, as I was saying, I was doing a podcast recently. And I was they were talking about the next Bond song to, that will come out for the next film, and bearing in mind it's likely to be um, a, a new Bond, I was saying, you know, 
<laughs> if we start with another downer, where the hell can we go? I mean, if he's already <laughs> miserable and, and washed up in the first film, so it's got to be an upbeat song next time, hasn't it, really? Hmm. But yeah. hey, we've got another guest here. Let me bring him in. Special guest here, Martin Mulder, the hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Hang on, let me get you up here, Martin. Oh, hey, Martin. Hey, Martin. Oh, how do I get you on? How do I get you onto there? Oh, I can't do it. Never mind. I'll have to work out how to use this thing. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Martin, we have you been watching any of this? I know you were busy tonight, yeah, yeah. but have you caught bits of it? Yeah, I got bits of it. I mean, first of all, I think we all want to just say another massive thank you to, to you. You're going to get it in stereo because any minute I think I thank you on the video. But, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> but I mean, thank two thank yous, really. Thank you for organizing this and for putting on something that has meant so much to every single person in that picture right there that is something that they will take for the rest of their life to their grave as probably one of the greatest memories of their life i think anybody that was there that was the you know in the in the crowd probably like myself would say apart from the wedding day and the and the kids being born was the greatest thing i've ever experienced <laughs> so thank you so much for organizing that but secondly for having us involved and giving us an opportunity thank you so much for that well that was my pleasure i mean it was an idea that we worked on quite early on uh and I knew it was something that you really like to do. Yeah. And yeah, and it was something that I really liked. Although I, I, I couldn't really see it, you know, in, in that small space. But you, you had a very clear vision of, of how you were going to do it. And, uh, and I'm so glad that we, we went with that idea. So, yeah, it was, it was a fantastic evening. It was just yeah. surreal. It was. I mean, I um, I, I got thinking back now because you were. I, I remember you saying, "I love the story you had the moment." Tell, tell us. Well, I won't spoil it. You tell us about that moment you had that you always tell. I love the story. <laughs> it, it was such a hectic week. You know, we started in Portugal and then we went to Switzerland, and and, and I had to to deal with so many things. And and this concert was the the the, 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 the two hours that I could really just sit back and relax so i found myself a spot all the way in the back and i was drinking my espressos i was on espresso coffees for i had like 10 or something and i was just sitting there and and you know yeah uh, i remember at some point you had uh, uh, we have all the time in the world and i i it was just a very emotional moment uh, and i was just sitting there enjoying it and i just some saw somebody come up to me with a question and I've had like hundreds of them in the week before so I knew what was coming and somebody was coming up and I was like shh <laughs> I just shushed him shush. <laughs> and he, he the moment he saw me he realized it and he turned around and I <laughs> he left so it, it clearly worked but that was just my moment I it was two hours of nothing on my mind and uh, could just sit back and relax uh, so it was wonderful did you did you have any you know i had a couple of moments um around this point and then more so afterwards when we were kind of you know we packed everything down and we were kind of traveling down i had just those these moments where you just allow all of the emotion and everything to come in because when you're yeah. the main man and everybody's looking to you to kind of keep the event moving and you want to make sure everybody has the perfect time you almost don't get the opportunity to really enjoy it as a fan like everybody else did like i was no talking way. earlier with the medley where i wanted to step on the other side of the <laughs> microphone right. and and yeah. soak it all in but then i also needed to make sure that we were delivering that for everyone to you know how mm. was that for you did you did you have any moment did you have any moments when you just let it all flood in and you, you must have had moments when you got a bit teary and stuff well there were absolutely moments that 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 I was like on my own. Uh, I, I made sure I had I had a few of those moments during that event. Uh, just uh, go back on my own uh, and sit <laughs> sit behind the corner, you know, mm. so that nobody knew where I was. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, then you you, but it, it it was it was specifically here during the concert that it was like emotional. Yeah. 
uh, just because everything, you know, fell in its place and 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 and, and everything fitted in together, and you had that marvelous sunset and. You were up there with all these stars and all these people that were having such a great time, and everybody was so well dressed, and you know, it w we were living a Bond film, basically. Yeah, I mean, the weather. I don't talk about weather, but for for the weather for that time of year, we got it so amazing, didn't we? I mean, they, was, they normally get cloud, and it was we perfect. In, it was beautiful. We were in Portugal, and we were watching the the. the the weather forecast for Switzerland, and it was like cold, it was rainy, it was foggy, snowing. We were watching the, the, the webcam, the Pete's Gloria webcam, yes, and you couldn't see anything. Well. Yeah. It, was, it was like total <laughs> fog. And we were like, okay, how many, how many coats did we pack? <laughs> and the moment we arrived in Switzerland, it was like clear blue sky. It, yeah. All was gone, it was unbelievable. We were so lucky with that. You could just see forever, couldn't you? You yeah, could just absolutely. see as far as you could see, you know, it was yeah. absolutely unbelievable. Oh, and what was sort of reaction like? Because I mean, like, it's difficult for me to ask this question. I know, I know the things that people say. I mean, after we played, you know, and people, there's obviously the mixture of people in the crowd, the people that had heard Cue the Music before, and then those that hadn't. And I mean, what was that reaction like? What, what were sort of people feeling about the, the, the concert afterwards? Well, I think everybody was 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 completely satisfied with with whatever they saw, and uh, you know it, it lived up to all their expectations. That's that's mainly what I heard. Yeah. And, uh, so. Absolutely. Oh, you stay How many of you are willing to help them put all the stuff down in this? Table? Yeah, nobody helped us. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say a few things. It has been an amazing journey. And it started all two years ago with a very small idea. Let's do something with location tours in Portugal. It exploded from there. And now suddenly we're all here uh, with good friends, fans of the, of the film. And I don't think it has ever done before. A nine day celebration of one single film. It's unbelievable. But that couldn't, that, that couldn't have worked without you. I mean, otherwise I would be standing here all alone. It wouldn't have been so much fun. So I would like to thank you for showing up and for being here and for supporting the event. Thank you, thank you. The thing is, Martin, the, you, you think about this event, the 50th anniversary of On a Secret Service, the setting, the fact that George Lazenby was there and the various cast and crew that were there, this will never, ever be repeated again, will it? The, the, the actual circumstances won't be. No, absolutely not. It was a, a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Uh, I mean, you, you, could, you could set something similar up. Uh, but all the older stars are getting older. Uh, well, you still have the same weather. Uh, there are so many things, so many different elements that that all just fitted in. Uh, so I don't see it happen uh, uh, again. Ever. Not like this. Not like no, this. Not like this. No. You, you, you know, you could do. You can do diamonds in. I know you want to do diamonds in Vegas at some point and. You know, um, yeah, but, you know, F F Vegas is no Pete's Gloria. It's it's just exactly. different. That's the thing. That's the thing, yeah. and you won't get James Bond there, of course, either. No. Sadly, but uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. we did Casino Royal out at the Casino Monte Carlo. We did do that, and somebody earlier on asked about other <laughs> other places we played yes, or would I'll like to play. <laughs> but we also did. We also I've said this a few times. We were booked to do the Ocean Club in the Bahamas. Right. about four or five years ago and then there was that massive hurricane in the carib uh, in the caribbean yeah. remember and they had to shut the the venue for about six weeks over the period when we were supposed to be going there and the flights of books and everything it was do you remember that matt you were going to do that i think you jez you'd have been on that yeah. as well absolutely gutting that we missed out on that yeah i can imagine <laughs> but the casino de monte carlo is a nice place to play yeah uh, I, I can imagine uh, it was and we had a couple of we had, yeah we had we had Rick uh, Yoon was was there in, in oh, right. the event 
Yeah, and, and Manny Penny herself. So that was quite unique as well. That was Stephen cool. Saltzman was there as well. Yeah, yes, well, he lives there, right? Yeah. yeah, it does, yeah. Turn this up a little bit. I do enjoy this. Yeah. We ended up with an extra trumpet player there. If you're wondering where on earth this ringer came from, that's James. He's actually one of the tech crew. He's actually a, well, <laughs> was a professional trumpet player. And I, I said, we could really do with an extra extra pair of chops on this uh, one. Can you, <laughs> can you bring your DJ and everything over to Switzerland just to do that one piece? He's like, yeah, no problem. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, I've got to mention as well, Duncan, you can just see his little camera poking into the picture just then. Um, just if he's watching Duncan's uh, been a bit poorly recently and just want to wish him well get well soon Duncan if you're watching you have a problem with your hi-hat lee yeah uh this was really interesting because uh on this was it was it really week, was it really interesting well it wasn't that interesting <laughs> but I, really, uh, I, I was trying to fix it in time basically you have a uh, on the hi-hat you have two clips and basically on this specific gig it just decided to cross thread and i used that I, I now have a spare just in case but on that specific gig it never went on me so i basically had to I had to basically ram it underneath the hi hat so that it actually held. Uh, but thankfully, it held. So, but I threw that one away. <laughs> yeah. We had a few technical problems. You had a couple of mics on the top toms that didn't come out in the recording and stuff, which is a shame. And if I can ask a question, yeah. <laughs> Go on, Martin. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm always wondering how do you mu musician look at yourself i mean are you always looking for for uh, things that could have done better or, or are you looking for errors or, or that's a really good look at you? yeah, yeah how that, do you look at your own performance that's a really good uh, question actually um i think it it depends if you i think it depends on how you know how the gig went so if there's things that you know that you're expecting didn't go well then you're looking for them and then you're really critical of them Right. But I think I'd be surprised if anybody here disagrees. But I, I think probably on this we'd all be hard pushed to find. You'd be really, really ultra critical to find stuff wrong in here. There would be little things, but not things that would right. feed into anybody watching. I don't know, uh, Jez. You're one of the most critical people of <laughs> oh, yourself. For that. Uh, no, of yourself. No. Of yourself, you are. Like you, <laughs> you'll come off. You'll come off a gig. You'll come off a gig, Jez, and, and I'll you're be like, Jez, right. you are absolutely on fire tonight and you go now nah, i made i made some absolute howlers tonight and i'll get the recording and i'll, I'll be sitting there going where is these howlers like there's nothing there's nothing wrong oh well, you nailed it and when you said like you know how it went afterwards you know i could get to the end of the gig and i could tell you exactly where if i've made a mistake exactly where it will be and probably what it was you know and, and to be honest you, it becomes bigger in your mind at that point and then when you watch it if, if you watch it back or listen back and you go oh don't even really notice it you know so these things take on more importance at the time but then often when you look you look back on it it you know the little things don't don't matter but you know warren you're right there wasn't much in this at all i think everyone played so well you know i yeah there's nothing i can remember thinking oh i wish that had been you know different or uh, you know, but that's what so sort can of we, you, sorry go on. Can, can, can we safely say that it's that yet you play better uh, uh, the, the higher up the mountain the better you play <laughs> I think so yeah there's oh, some sort of maybe, like it, maybe it's an oxygen thing it must be <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't think it's a theory that any of us want to test too often and I can say that for sure. <laughs> I haven't got time to think I think that's what it was the oxygen was getting to our brain so we just had to keep keep going Right. Yeah. <laughs> it 
It wasn't oxygen in that bottle that we gave you, Lee. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Yeah, what I was don't that? think any of us, on this specific gig, like, I think we were all concentrating so much on our individual mm. parts that right. we didn't even have time to think. We were just in the moment. It was almost like a form of meditation. You know, we, we just were in playing zone. our parts, executing our parts, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's true. And the thing is as well is that don't forget that 80% of the show we've done quite a lot as well. Right. The, the, the bits that were new were terrifying in the fact that, you know, it was so on the edge of your seat that we've never ever played it properly i mean this we again we didn't play this all the way through at all in the sound check and this actually is probably one of the harder things i think we do along with backseat driver in other ways but it's fun because it's such a, it's so much about the groove this one and i think yeah. that the rhythm section once they got into this then it's just it's just so made for our rhythm section isn't it gents Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That bass though is so filthy. It's amazing. Yeah. That's the best. It's like the highlight for me of that little bit with the bass. Yeah. Yeah, I, I spent ages getting the, um, the guitar sounds for this on the Kemper. I spent I did the uh, the unit that I used to get all the sounds and stuff and it's Yeah. Yeah, it sounded great, Steve. It sounded great. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I, I mean I mean it's it, I think, I think, you know, like, I mean, not to kind of gush over technology, but, you know, like, I think it's it's integral, isn't it, really? Like, to be able to get, you know, that, for all of the tracks and stuff, like, with the with the keys and with the guitar and everything, that every, every track's got a slightly different sound. Mm. And I think, it, you know, for, for a musician, if you care about the music, you're going to want to, you know, nail that sound. Definitely. Yeah. It's going to be something like this, you know? I couldn't agree with you more, hundred percent. I mean, to the point where I was, I was, I was almost saying to you, Jez, like, whatever it takes, I'll get you from the Susie Quattro gig to this gig because Oof. I, I know how much attention you play to the pay to these sounds and you know the medley and everything else, and you know you don't always get that with keyboard players. You know, there's some there's some people that go so far and go, yeah, that's close enough, and you can't have that in a show like this. Oh yeah. I totally agree. It's like if you listen to that klaxon sound that I'm playing at the moment. Yeah. That nasty sort of alarm kind of sound. It took ages to get that. Ages to program it. And the one at the beginning, you know, it took far more time than I'd probably admit, you know. But it's worth it because it makes it authentic. Yeah. And that's part about what we are, really. I think we do yeah. do things authentically and, you know, with passion and, you know, just makes it all, all all kind of makes it much more um, of a you know good great listening experience I, I hope mm. I think what, you what, know, what, go on sorry, sorry. No, you go. now what was this show uh, was this more of a challenge because you played before a few hundred people that that can literally dream the, on a soundtrack for instance does that make it more difficult I, I think I actually think it makes it easier because you 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 know that you you're playing to a home crowd where they want you to do you know sometimes we we play you you live for moments like this as a musician and if you don't then you're in the wrong game you know when we go and do some of the corporate events where we'll go and play for it doesn't even need to be a James Bond event it can just be, it can be a corporate event that they've maybe seen James Bond honestly I can tell you we've done some of those where we've played at one of the room and we could have been playing anything. They could have had a right. CD on of Mickey Mouse music and no one would have given the monkeys. You know, you do it because it pays the bills, but that's not right. what you, you you know, that, that gets you up in the morning, gets you passionate about music. Stuff like this is, and the opportunity to play music like this, which is amazing music to people that appreciate how amazing it is, and they're willing you to be the best that you can be, then you thrive on that. And... You know, some people, I, I think that's also the key to getting the right people as well. You know, I mean, sometimes we've had people that have cracked under that pressure, but then, you know, they're not the right people for cue the music. I mean, I know we're coming to the end of the show and I, I was thinking about summing this up. You know, it's been a journey for cue the music to find 
the blend of the guys that are run in the band now on this show and the, in the wider group as well that aren't on this show that but what play with the band and uh, you know i think we've got the absolute perfect blend of people you know it's kerry and i always joke and this is an awful thing to say on and anybody watching from the previous history of the band i apologize for saying this but you know we sort of say we kissed our frogs to find our princes and uh, that's, that's awful but but you know it, that's not to say that the guys in the past weren't good musicians they were but they just maybe weren't right for cue the music and i think we've got such an amazing bunch of guys that really love the show really love working with each other we get on really well and that was really kind of um you know the, the epitome of that in that medley was the team spirit that kind of we all pulled together and, and delivered that when it was hard to do but i think we are pretty much at the end here guys and i want to say a big big thank you to all of you giving up your time tonight i hope that everybody watching live and that watches this later has enjoyed uh hearing our thoughts on it and um it's been fun to revisit I, I will before we, before we sort of go I'll just kind of go around everybody and just get some final thoughts if you've got anything you want to say I won't put you under the spotlight anybody got anything they want to sum up with before we go otherwise might have to hand over to Joe for something wise <laughs> I, was, I'm, I, I was just going to <laughs> come on Steve. Steve Steve you go you've got something you want to say go yeah on. sorry come mate on, I, I was just going to say like that <laughs> That you guys were talking there, but as the 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 song finished, I almost applauded because <laughs> it was very, it was very kind of like just watching that. I remember the the feeling of kind of like relief at the end <laughs> of kind of like oh, I mean, I'm not going to swear here, but you know, like oh, we've done it, <laughs> like you know, yeah, like, like we we got through it, and yeah, I just I, you know, like like I said, just remember that all of the emotions through the day and you know the, the the stress and everything and then like how well it was going through the gig and you know to, you know it was one of those gigs where like for me i have kind of like two types of gigs where you know sometimes you have tiny things that go wrong and they really bug you and they kind of ruin the the vibe uh, of of how much you enjoy the gig and you kind of forget what's going on around you but then you have certain gigs that the vibe is so good on stage that like you know almost anything could happen and you'll still really enjoy it yeah and, right you know and that was definitely one of those gigs so the tiny things that you know kind of went wrong for me um you know it didn't because of just how you know like the the experience and everything it just you know it 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 didn't change anything for me really i just i enjoyed you know the whole thing and you know so yeah <laughs> I felt like I was one of the crowd them for a minute at the end. <laughs> uh, Joe, I'm going to hand over to you, and I think Martin, you can finish off. But one thing I just, I think I said it on the stream last night on the premiere. I literally, every time I watch these reviews, I mean, I have to do it with the volume up, but I, I get really emotional hearing. It's just the passion that's coming off the people. And it's, you know, it kind of harks to what you're saying, Steve, the relief, I suppose, that we did it. But you know, the pride as well and the enjoyment and everything else. Like, you know, even though I probably watched these a few dozen times over the last few years, if not more, you know, still, I still gets me when I, when I watch them back and there's only probably what nine or 10 people just on here. And it, you know, it's just, it does it for me every time. Mm. Joe, what you were going to, you were going to sum up, I think as well. It just i think you kind of nailed it on the head it was i mean it's it's great even just watching everybody like the, the crowd break up afterwards you know honestly this was this was the moment where we all felt like we were smoking a cigarette like, like <laughs> uh, i mean it, it really was just i'm the the pinnacle of one of the most incredible experiences i think i've ever had i mean honestly if i could think of a day i wish i could just if 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 god said you have to just have one day over and over for the rest of your life this is it i mean this was yeah. the day i mean there, there was there, there was honestly just mm. nothing like it and and on on every level it just felt like it was just this this kind of you know hitting this crescendo of of every moment for for so many reasons lining up just just so incredibly perfectly and this was it so i mean honestly it was it was easily one of the greatest moments of my life and and you guys are to thank for it so everybody Aww. thank you so much martin and the, and the band i'm honestly you guys were just yeah. just honestly just the, the greatest moment I, i've ever had literally it's good to hear 
Martin, do you want to you want to sum up to finish well, I off? Wanna, I want to. I want to ask you something. Uh, did you yeah. ever tell the people at home uh, uh, what we had originally planned as the encores? Did yeah, I did. I told, said on the stream oh, earlier told... on that the okay. choir and yeah, that was such a right. shame, wasn't it, that we couldn't do that? I remember running up and down the stairs, totally out of breath, <laughs> trying to catch everybody uh, who was already on the on the on the, the cable car down, uh, trying to get them back, but. Uh, they were just yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, it's a long it's a long day for them though, isn't it? To be fair, Absolutely. when everybody, yeah. you know, the, the the celebrities and they are I use that, but they are, you know, yeah. and 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 for them, they everybody wants a piece of them. I think poor old George sure. by the he was absolutely shattered. I think you know being yeah. pulled in a hundred different directions, and and the thing is, well, every time anyone speaks to them, it, they've got so much excitement and energy that must be very very hard to absorb that yeah. all day and not be exhausted from it. But uh, yeah, and sometimes but, you forget that everybody's already in their eighties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, um, yeah. So. Mate, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much again for giving us this experience. So, well, my pleasure. I enjoyed it myself a lot as well. So, thank you for being there and and for for your contribution to this fantastic celebration. No pleasure. And hopefully see you see you in Vegas or something. Yeah. Or somewhere, <laughs> anywhere. Pitching. <laughs> always always on, on after the angle, me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank I you know, so much. We, yeah, make a note, yeah. The 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 quotes in the in the in the post. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> thank you so much again for joining us, everybody, and uh, we'll see you. You, see you all soon. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. bye.